Good afternoon, everyone. Happy International Creole Day. My name is Joanne Ferreira. I am a lecturer in linguistics at the UWI St. Augustine, and I am being interpreted in Trinidad and Tobago Sign Language by Niobe Rod um, Rodriguez, who you see on the screen. So thank you, Niobe. Thank you very much for being here with us and for this wonderful partnership between um, French Creole, aka Patois, and our own sign language, two indigenous languages in Trinidad and Tobago. So it's my pleasure um, to talk to you very quickly about our French Creole foundations, our Trinidadian speech in the 21st century, and how it's been defined and shaped by Patois. So I just wanted to start off by saying Patois is in our DNA, our linguistic DNA. Right. So I'm just gonna talk about three things. I'm gonna give us a short background as in some historical highlights that have brought us to where we are. Um, some of the things that we've kept in our English and our English Creole that are directly influenced by French Creole. And that would include things like grammar and vocabulary. And where we go from here, our future, um, and how we value our heritage, and, and so we understand our roots so that we can look towards the fruit of the future, right? Um, so some historical highlights. Um, this is a little timeline that I put together. So first of all, um, we had the Spanish conquest in 1498. And of course, long before that, we had several indigenous groups um, from the area, including the Caribbean and South America, where we are between. So in 1498, this, the Europeans came and met several groups here. Um, fast, fast forward a bit, and we had the French being interested in us, and uh, Philippe uh, Hose, uh, Hume de Saint Laurent, a Frenchman in Grenada, or a Grenadian Frenchman, um, he proposed the schedule or cédula de population, and uh, that was under um, Chacon, who we call Chacon, as in Chacon Street. Um, and he brought, between the two of them, they brought French Creole speakers here, French and French Creole speakers here. And the people who spoke these languages were Europeans and Africans. Fast forwarding again, um, the British now came a few years later. Um, and then finally in 1802, um, Trinidad became officially British, um, at least as was recognized by Spain and the Treaty of Amiens. So, of course, we had a very complex situation where um, the majority of our speakers were French Creole. We were being governed by Spanish laws, but politics was British. So the British were not very happy at the fact that we had, um, that they had such, they, they called us an unruly population. Um, that they couldn't govern us because we were so multilingual. It wasn't just Spanish and French and French Creole and English. It was Amerindian languages. It was, um, um, we had people coming in from all different other parts of Europe as well, African languages. So it was a whole big melting pot. And uh, that, then there was a drive towards the Anglicization policy that um, Attorney General Charles William Warner helped to implement. And the whole idea behind that was that you could not be a citizen, a British citizen, and enjoy English rights and privileges if you could not speak English. And of course, that affected everybody in the country, especially since English was uh, practically forced down people's throats um, in the education system in what they call the ward schools. Um, and can you imagine being in a classroom where your mother tongue is Spanish, your mother tongue is French? Um, maybe there were even some um, signing people back then in the classroom and they would have been discriminated against because um, nobody spoke English. So it, um, the Anglicization policy affected the language of education and much more. But in the middle of all that, we actually had um, the very, very first grammar of any French Creole anywhere. Um, uh, a grammar of Patwa written um, by one of our own in 1869. John Jacob Thomas was not a native speaker of um, Trinidadian French Creole, but he found it important precisely for education that educators would respect the language as a genuine language and not just some corrupt form, quote unquote, of a superior language. 
um, and also he was interested in um, things like translating the Bible, translating Aesop's fairy tales, um, proverbs, looking at the whole pan-creole movement, and uh, also importantly, the legal aspect of it. Um, the fact that many people who spoke Patwa did not have legal rights, especially the right to an interpreter in the courtrooms. So they were at a disadvantage um, in the courtrooms as well, just because they spoke Patwa. Right, so that's a, a quick look at how many centuries is that? Um, three, three and a half centuries of what got us here today. So um, some of the other colonial highlights, as, as I mentioned some of these before, Amerindian Trinidad had 12 nations that we know about, and not just Caribs and Arawaks and Warao people. Um, and that whole Spanish period was 1498 to 1803. We had the first record of enslaved Africans in 1606. Um, and we had two attempts at colonizing Trinidad by the French, but the second one was successful. And that's one, the one that brought thousands and thousands of people speaking both French and French Creole. Um, so that was Spanish Trinidad, and our British Trinidad was 1797 to 1962. I'm sure some of you all have parents and grandparents who were born around that time. Um, under the British period, 1813 was the first registration of enslaved Africans, um, but it took a while for English to become official. Um, and even if a language becomes official on paper, that doesn't mean it's actually carried out in real life. Um, then we had the Emancipation Act that heralded the arrival of groups like the Portuguese, the Chinese, Indians, and um, free Africans from the US, um, from the Caribbean, a whole lot of groups. And Trinidad was known as the Babel of the Caribbean. So in all of that Babel, we had the Anglicization policy that I mentioned um, that was enforced to try to make everybody uh, English speaking and therefore a good citizen. Um, and of course, that had implications for people's psyche and how we are today. So, um, so was Trinidad really ever French? Was it French Creole? Uh, what were we? We were never officially French, but we were definitely part of what we call Creolophonie. And um, we belong in the same group as St. Lucia, Martinique, um, uh, Grenada, everybody. So some of the things that we've kept um, some of the things that we've kept include things like um, our grammar, the way we mark our tenses. Um, so when we say I eat, um, that's not I am eating, that I eat means the past tense. And how actions occur, so you have others eat, etc., which we'll look at in a little while. Very, very similar to um, French Creole. The way we mark singular and plural, so singular would be something like um, one book, and uh, two would be two book. Right, because the plural is marked not in the noun itself, but outside of the noun. Um, so I don't know if this is news to anybody, but a, a lot of our words from flora, fauna, folklore, festivals, food, our place names have a lot of patwa influence. So this is what I was talking about. Like when we say others go to uh, others go market every day, um, ka corresponds to that does. Um, I go see she tomorrow. The go there corresponds to k. Um, what the example I just mentioned about I eat, I eat already. That's the past tense, so there's no um, suffix or anything. I did eat corresponds to te, and I use this to or used to eat uh, would be teka. That's very, very much um, built on French Creole. Um, and I mentioned the number about how we explain something that's plural before the noun rather than a suffix after the noun. Um, other aspects of grammar that we call calques that are like literal translations, things like to make baby um, from feish or fe piti popo, um, to make hot and cool, to make message. That whole make structure is from Creole. To have as well, it have um, and she have 10 years, that's straight from French Creole. So when people criticize um, it have as being bad grammar, it's actually perfect patwa. <laughs> you know, so ini and it have same, same, um, same structure. So in terms of flora and fauna, we have Barbadine, Chatain, Dachin, Pomsite, Pomerac, Poidou, Chenet, Topitambu, Zaboka, uh, all those fruits. Uh, notice the spelling. Uh, because today is International Creole Day, I decided to spell everything according to um, French Creole um, 
orthography um, and the alphabet. We have Bocano, uh, Shadow Benny, Gitepei, Picker, Timawi, Zaba Farm, and Zaba Peak. All of those are what we know about in everyday speech. Um, the name for banana, fig. Fig, fig. fig comes from fig, and that is a Patwa word. Lakata, Siki, uh, and Gromichel, also from Patwa. Mango names like mango doodles, mango long, mango teen, mango ve, mango was, all types of mangoes. Um, many of them have Patwa names. And notice how if we say mango rose, we put the rose after um, the mango so that that structure is also French Creole. Because Julie mango is more English, but mango rose is more um, French and French Creole. So I can't get into all these details, but we have over 274 birds in Trinidad and Tobago that have French and French Creole names. We have mammals, uh, 20 of them, insects, including butterflies and others, 83 fish with Patois names and French names, eels, reptiles, snakes, and other, other members of the fauna um, grouping with Patois and French names. That's a lot. So the world of science has been enriched by our French and French Creole heritage. So some examples of fauna would be Jep, Kiskidi, Kobo, Krapo, Mapipi, Zandoli, and Zanshua or Joshua. Right, those are, I think, some of the more common ones. Folklore, I think we all know about Lagahu, La Jabless, Mama Glo, Papa Boa, Sukuya, and Dwen has a very Patwa pronunciation, but it's actually a Spanish word, which we'll look at in a while. Carnival, as one of our main national, as our main national festival, has names like Damlorin, Jab Jab, Jab Molasi, Pierogonad, Jambi, Neg Jardin, um, Dimash Gras, all of those things all come from um, French and French Creole. More festival things, Bel Air. We have over 90 calypsos that are still around in terms of actual recordings. Um, calendar songs, as in Bois, stick fighting. Um, the name Chantwell is Patois in French, Lavoie, which means, um, which comes from a word meaning the voice, not from the truth. That's a whole misconception. Tambu Bambu, mentioned Dimash Gras, Fet, Jouvet, Dingole, and Ramage, all connected to our cultural lives. Food, everybody loves food. So can you imagine a whole lovely menu full of Patwa um, uh, names of uh, dishes that have Patwa names? Dishes that have Patwa names. So we have Accra, Buljol, um, Farine, Hale, Kalalu, Consomme, um, Kuveti Pocham, Penepis, um, Chili Baby, Lanti Peas, Pemi, Siris, Supi, Tizan, and Tulum. Some of these things, um, the younger generation um, I didn't know about Halle, so I put our cake in brackets. Um, and also Kuveti Pocham, I actually had to go to Venezuela to find out what that was, even though I remember seeing it in a, a cookbook when I was growing up. Um, so here's an example. If we had a nice big potato menu of patwa food, we could start off your breakfast with some CK, Gromisha, Lakata figs, all the different mangoes. Um, your main meal could be buljol and beignet. You could have barbadine punch, pomsite juice, or pomerag juice. You could have any kind of fruit or other things for um, snacks. You could have your series, your chenet, your chili baby, your tulum, your pemi, kwadu, um, topitamu, and zikak, which is fat pork. For lunch, you could have acra uh, made with um, flour, which is fawin france. And you can have plantain with your acra, which is banana and zaboka, and bushi. Then you could follow that by a nice sankoch. And your heavy meal could be kalalu uh, with provisions like dashin and bonit, a kind of fish uh, cooked over buka, and some farine, cassava farine, lentils, and other food that you will season with, season with your shadow mani and you kusume it. And for dessert, you have supi, and you have lots of disappearing old time desserts um, made out of um, with cinnamon and co coconut um, and, um, and plantain and so on. For dinner, you can have curry cascadu and the shatain and a, a old time rice called diwijal. And makafushat and amwa and kui are all old patwa words that maybe some of our grandparents will remember. So if we ever have a nice patwa restaurant, we can have a whole menu, a trini patwa menu. 
Um, so we also had lots of fun in Batwa. We had card games, cards, um, card games, as well as children's games, um, cockfighting, um, hoop, kokioko, marbles, spinning tops, um, kite flying had a wealth of Patwa names. Uh, marbles, especially and kites, um, had lots and lots and lots of Patwa names. Place names, no shortage of that. Hundreds and hundreds of place names in Trinidad with French and French Creole pronunciations. So here's an example. I'm sure people have heard about um, Jean Wim for people from Arima. Um, Bastet. Um, we don't say blanchicheuse as the French word. We say blanchicheuse and we say chanflet because that's the patois pronunciation. And one day we could talk about how the two pronunciations differ. Um, notice all of our names like Shagaramas and Shaguanas and even like El Tukush, that CH would be pronounced like CH in Spanish. So Chaguaramas, Chaguanas and El Tukuche would have been the Spanish pronunciations, but the French and Patwa speakers gave us Shag, Chaguan and El Tukush. Um, Chodo, Grand Chimer, Grand Riviere, Quizé, Labas, Labré, Laline, Lavanti, Mansan, Mondezi, Montplaisir, Montcoco, Petitbourg, Point Fortin, Sawa, um, Sipawi, Tivali, and Trumacac. All of these are either Patwa names or Patwa influence names. I think the two most famous ones would be the Quizé and Sawa. And people love to criticize those pronunciations, but they're, they're, they're genuine Patwa, the genuine Patwa article. Um, if you go back in time, 17th and 18th centuries, to the, um, to the west of France, the northwest of France, um, those pronunciations um, like quizy coincide very closely with ours. Right? So lots more things like Kikote, a lot of words I put here like Afos, Bazodi, Boabande, Pussy Back, Break Piche, Depi, Jamet, Dudu, Flambeau, Comes, Lagli, Lahe, Makafouchette, Mako, Makomer, Mama Pool, Wovelang, Maljo, Pitikawem, Poto Leglise, Salop, Shabin, Tanti, Crick Crack, and Tim Tim Boasek for storytelling, Tutul Bay, Tut Bagai, Tut Moon, Vaikivai, and Zafir. I'm sure everybody has heard at least a few of these words in your lifetimes. We have plenty more areas which we don't have much time to get into, but we have parts of the body, um, sexual terms. Medicine, geography, aspects of nature, religion, clothes, jewelry, household items, tools, professions, especially cocoa and fishing, insults and negatives, and terms of endearment, all rooted in Patwa, and um, a lot of tribute to the ancestors in terms of the way they spoke. Um, proverbs, we have some things online. If you Google Patwa proverbs in Trinidad, you'll find a few. And John Jacob Thomas, our hero, who wrote the Creole grammar. Um, he also had quite a lot, and so did Father Anthony de Bertay. So a little plug for Spanish here. So the, the French Creole speakers, um, the Patois speakers, would have met Spanish speakers while they were here. So it's not like they threw Spanish out. Um, they adopted Spanish words and adapted them. So alpagata became alpagat. Bachaco became bachac. Buroquito became buroquit. Duende became duen. Caimito became caimet. Cascadura became um, Cascadu, still Cascadura. Um, Gallera became Gael. Uh, La Niapa became La Niap. Lapa became Lap. Mamargayo became Mamagay. Um, Paranda became Parang. Pastel, well, we still say pastel, but we uh, uh, spell it the French way. Planasso became Planas. Poco a Poco became Poca Poc. Poncha Crema became Poncha Creme. Sancocho became Sancocho and Zapato became Zapat. So all of this to me is extremely interesting to see how the languages that coexisted, they fed off of each other, people shared words, people adapted words, and then we think that these are quintessentially Trini because they're so much part of our um, heritage. So we have lots of businesses with um, place names that are, have taken on a Patwa place name like Vini Manger, Sassé Manger, a catering service. We have Boacano, uh, we have Kanboulé, um, we have Bati Mamzel, Macafouchette, different restaurants, Coco Bell, Vinny Apon, 
Mako Publishing is actually, Mako Magazine is done by Toot Bagai Publishing. So Mako and Toot Bagai, two wonderful Patwa names. Um, Mako used to be a very negative word when I was growing up and certainly something my parents and grandparents would not have said or tolerated, but it's undergone a process where it's much more respectable now that we have a, a glamorous magazine with the name, but it's still not something that's um, um, really that polite in the French Caribbean. Akaju as well is another Patwa pronunciation, um, but we also have French names for restaurants like Chaux, Mélange, Flambeau, Mon Plaisir, Chateau Guillaume, Chez Jean, Le Grand Almondie, Le Grand Courlan, Peche Patisserie, and La Boulangère uh, Artisan, which I think is a combination of things. Also, I have a lovely unisex salon in Maraval called Belle Chivet, Colibri Jewelers, the Kiskidi, Dudu Darling Productions, Zandoli Networking. There was a lovely restaurant called Oiseau d'Azil, Birds of the Island, Red Zandoline, Zandoli, and Eberwi Dondo. We have a place in Santa Cruz called Roti Cafe and Tut Bagai, one of my favorite. Irie Express delivers everything, delivers Tut Bagai. And the Trinidad Building and Loan Association for a long, long time had a, an entire um, motto in Patwa, let your rent pay for your house. So that was kite loyeu pei pu kayu. Our future. Um, if we value our heritage and we know a little bit of our context, we will know that we belong to a much wider Creolophone speaking group. Um, and French Creole, in fact, is the number one language of CARICOM. Um, because of Haiti, and it's the number two language of the Caribbean um, because of Haiti. And there are 13 million speakers, between 11 to 12 million in Haiti. Um, and of course, Martinique, Guadeloupe, French Guyana, um, Saint Lucia, Dominica. Then you have places in Venezuela, you have places in Louisiana. Um, and of course, you have Haitians all over Florida, um, New York, um, in Ontario, and in, in France as well. So in France, the um, French Creole language is actually the number one regional language of France because of the numbers of French Creole speakers from the Caribbean and also because there are French Creole speakers from the, um, the Indian Ocean as well. So um, there's a, 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 a French and French Creole network online called Montreal Creole and they recognize us as French Creole speaking with a whole section on the website um, devoted to us. In terms of the future as well, so apart from recognizing our place in the Creolophone world, uh, we, we need to understand that we actually have a lot of materials at our disposal for advocacy and campaigning. We have the Universal Declaration of Linguistic Rights, which entitles everybody, no matter their mother tongue, um, to have access to um, information, to health, to law, whether you, speak, whether you use a sign language or whether you use a spoken language, all of this is enshrined in that declaration um, from 1996. Um, closer to home, we have the Kingston Declaration, um, the Charter on Language Policy and Language Rights in the Creole-speaking Caribbean, which considers all of these issues and tries to make a space in education, law, place names, and, and all related aspects of our lives and culture. Um, so as I said, our Trinidad Tobago is not forgotten in the world of Creolophony. We have um, two volumes of a linguistic atlas of the Lesser Antilles that has um, uh, every section includes us. Um, the same website I mentioned, uh, Montreal Creole, um, includes um, Trinidad. And every time we, there are festivals in um, Guadeloupe and Martinique, we have um, as many Trini representatives as can go, and every single time they surprise somebody. So, where can you learn French Creole? Where can you learn Patois? Um, at UWI, St. Augustine, in our department. Uh, we have two courses. The Caribbean Yard Campus has two levels of um, courses, beginners and intermediate. And the Alliance um, Francaise in Port of Spain, they offer introductory patois as well. And of course, in COVID-19, everything is online. So you have access, anybody wanting to learn patois has lots of access online to all different levels. And it's extremely exciting. Where can you learn about French Creole if you didn't want to learn necessarily to speak it? Uh, we have... Um, uh, ben Braithwaite and I, who some of you will know for um, his work in TTSL. Um, he and I work together on a project, Trinidad and Tobago Endangered Languages, to, um, TEL, so we're telling you about TEL. Um, 
and we have some resources there about French Creole, our um, Dr. Braithwaite's blog, um, which he um, has me guest in once in a while, the language blog and social media. We have a Facebook group and page, and we also have a YouTube channel. So you can find us under Trinidadian Patwa Speakers. Um, the dictionaries, um, this big dictionary by Lise Weiner um, has 12,200 words. And um, at least 10% of those words are straight from Patwa and also from French. Um, French Creole has its own dictionaries across the region. There are Martinican French Creole dictionaries, Guadeloupean ones, Dominican ones, St. Lucian ones, and of course, Haitian ones. This one on the screen is um, from St. Lucia, and it is free and online downloadable as a PDF. And you can search and find um, at, um, uh, items there. Now, Google Translate also has Haitian Creole online, which is very nice if you want to get some, a quick idea of what something might look like. And of course, you can't tr trust everything on an, uh, a non-human translator and interpreter. So uh, be careful when you use Google Translate. Um, grammars, this is what um, the newer edition of John Jacob Thomas's grammar looks like. That's also free and online um, on, in archive.org. And uh, also if you Google Trinidadian French Creole grammar, you'll find um, a very nice grammar sketch just on one page, one website page um, by Gertrude Aubusha and um, gives us the background of our language, vocabulary, songs and grammar, etc. Um, we created an alphabet chart last year, um, and uh, that was fun to do. So looking at the Patwa um, vowel system, the oral vowels and nasalized vowels and different consonants, and um, some of them are more complex than others. But at the bottom of the um, alphabet chart here, you'll see um, the actual alphabet in, in alphabetical order. So there are lots of resources out there. Um, and I, I would like to end by just saying, um, as we re take time to recall the past, that's going to help us lay the foundation so that we can forge the future together. And not forgetting French Creole, not forgetting Patois is extremely important um, for our history, our identity, understanding who we are, um, what makes us unique, and uh, gives us special insights into the way our ancestors spoke. Um, so we may not ever get back to a stage where everybody speaks French Creole, as a mother tongue, but we can certainly accord it a place of respect and let it inform our literature, our, um, our, our nature, our, our, our um, heritage, every aspect of our lives that Patwa has touched. So there's just so much to go into, and I hope that this short snippet has actually helped us to um, understand a bit about our past. And I just want to wish everybody a happy Creole month, and especially today, happy International Creole Day 2020. Merci en chai tout le monde, merci en pile, uh, and thank you again, merci Naomi, and um, thanks everyone for listening. And if you have any questions, um, you can drop them in the um, comment area on YouTube and we'll answer as much as possible. Thank you.